So here we have false teacher Rick Warren basically taking us on a tour of his massive library like he's on an episode of Cribs. Now, some of you younger guys might not remember this TV show, but it was a show in which MTV took us on a tour of celebrities' mansions and properties. And, and so here we have Rick Warren being extremely boastful and arrogant. And what makes it worse when you see a false teacher like Rick showing off their massive estate is that they got it by deceiving their followers and preaching a false Christ. Okay, That's how it was attained. I mean, it's bad enough that the man encourages and endorses the Pope. But the thing about false teachers is they have no shame. They just have no shame. You would never see John MacArthur showing off his large estate, bragging about how large his library is. And why? Because none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that the people you lead receive the truth of the gospel, that they may be saved. Listen, being rich is not a sin. How you handle your wealth determines how much you fear God. Oh. Uh, you know, all readers are leaders. The moment you stop reading, you stop leading. If you read the right books, it can open the door to a whole wealth of knowledge. This happens to be the purpose-driven life. What on earth am I here for? Ah, it was just sold a few copies, but you open it up and, oh, look at this little button. And you press the door, press the button, and all of a sudden it opens the door. Let's go on in here, see what we can find. Welcome, welcome to my library. So everything in here has a story of my... 53 years of ministry and history and people. Here's Calvin and Wesley. Here's, uh, you know, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien. Here's John Bunyan and uh, Charles Spurgeon and all of these things. Let me show you something I didn't get to show you earlier. This is what I call my bucket of ministry. When people ask, what does a pastor do? This bucket explains it. Sometimes you're shepherding. You're caring for people. You're counseling. You're caring. But sometimes you're cultivating. And you're out cultivating. You're helping them grow to spiritual growth. Sometimes you have to go out and you're harvesting. And here's a, here's a sickle for harvesting. And that's part of your, your job as a pastor. Sometimes you're picking fruit. This is an old classic fruit picker that you can do. You're picking fruit, spiritual fruit. Sometimes you go, you go fishing. You know, I'll make you fishers men. Sometimes you have to go to battle and you have to go to war over something. So we got a sword. Sometimes you just, most of the time, serving, big serve. So you get a big serve. But 90% of the time, you're scooping poop. Okay, you're dealing with people's problems and their messes. And that's really what a pastor does. So welcome to the bucket of ministry. Loneliness is the great opposite of a sense of entitlement. If you want my definition of humility, just use that one. It's the opposite of a sense of entitlement. So do you walk through life mainly feeling, you owe me. You owe me a certain look when I walk by you on the street. You owe me a certain behavior in the neighborhood. You owe me that newspaper before 6.30. You owe me, and I get mad when you don't pay. Is that your basic orientation? If it's not, if it is, you're not humble. And I'm not humble. So you need to pray for your pastors. Who in the world can be like that? Well, Christians. Do you remember Paul, what he said? In Romans 1.15, he said, I am debtor to the Jews and to the Greeks, meaning everybody. I owe everybody. Nobody owes me. Where does that come from? It comes from being stunned at the grace of God. When he owed you nothing but hell, he went to hell for you. Until you're stunned by that, you will have a sense of entitlement. You will walk through life and your basic orientation will be you owe me. But as soon as it lands on you with stunning force that you 
were owed hell. And you got heaven at the cost of the life of the Son of God. So much for your sense of entitlement. It's over. Humility happens. It's a battle. We have to preach it to ourselves. We have to preach the gospel to ourselves every day.